weeknights. Live from ABC7, this is Eyewitness News. Good morning. It is 9 o'clock on your Saturday morning. I'm Irene Cruz. And I'm Mark Cutter Robles. We got Tony Cabrera for the weather forecast here on a Saturday. Well, we oh, did hi, have him, but bye, apparently Tony. we don't want to talk to him. So <laughs> here's the deal. Hi. This I'm is done. I'm, done. <laughs> I'm not <needed. laughs> This is not a repeated forecast because some people may say rain again. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, and we do need it. You know, all the experts have said we need a series of storms through March, right, to, to get out of our drought situation. So this is good. And it looks like this one's going to behave well compared to the last ones that just brought uh, a, a messy situation to many areas across California. We look at the live Mega Doppler 7000 HD and you see the storms coming closer in many areas under the rain right now. These are light showers compared to what's to come. It's just really going to build from this point. You can see from Oxnard through Thousand Oaks, Simi Valley, Agora Hills under some of that lighter rain. And then we move east San Fernando down to Glendale, Pasadena, light showers again. And then we move south towards Inglewood, Southgate, Downey up to Pico Rivera, light rain. Eventually we'll all be under this rain. And look at the timing here when we look at the computer model. By 10 a.m., L.A. County, Ventura County under it. And then it starts to creep into eastern portions of our area. It picks up going into the afternoon hours. Some of you might get a little bit of a break. We might come to more light rain, then back to moderate rain. And by 6 o'clock tonight, when that front is passing right over us, we're going to start to see heavier rainfall in many areas, heavy snow up in our mountains. But coming up, we'll talk about storm number two that's coming tomorrow night. Back to you guys. All right, Tony, thank you. L.A. Mayor Karen Bass has declared a state of emergency as the area recovers from the recent storm damage and prepares for more storms. People living in the Studio City area checking the drains, hoping that this weekend's rainfall does not cause more flooding. Heavy downpours this past week sent a river of water and debris flowing down hillsides, leaving some homes there with several feet of mud. Meanwhile, up the coast in Ventura County, dozens of people were rescued after they were stranded in the Ojai area because of a washed out road and rock slides. With more rain arriving, Governor Newsom urging people to stay alert as he toured the damage further north in Montecito. Now the eighth atmospheric river in just 16 days to make its way into the state of California, likely a ninth a uh, few days uh, beyond today. Yeah, picking up on what the governor said, the state has been drenched by atmospheric river storms since last month, putting a dent in the drought, but also causing that flooding, power outages, and at least 19 deaths. And you can stay up to date on the weather with this free ABC7 Los Angeles app. We're taking a live look at Big Bear, where we have very low visibility there. Um, you can check the weather real time. You can also stream our newscasts if you lose power. Well, a community in mourning after another Riverside County Sheriff's deputy has been shot and killed in the line of duty. Eyewitness News reporter Leticia Juarez is joining us live from Lake Elsinore this morning with the details on this heartbreaking story. Letty. Yeah, good morning, Mark and Irene. It just seems literally two weeks ago, I was reporting on the story of Deputy Isaiah Cordero, who was shot and killed in the line of duty. And now here we are in Lake Elsinore just two weeks later, reporting on another deputy killed in the line of duty. Uh, we're learning a lot more about that deputy. Uh, his name was Deputy Dar Darnell Calhoun, who was killed yesterday afternoon while responding to a domestic violence call and a child custody dispute. The 30-year-old joined the Riverside County Sheriff's Department last February and would have reached his one-year mark next month with the uh, department. Now, according to Sheriff Chad Bianco, Deputy Calhoun was the first to arrive to that call. A second deputy arrived and found him a short time later, found him wounded there in the street. Uh, we're told that the suspect and the responding deputy then exchanged gunfire. That suspect was wounded. Fellow officers took Deputy Calhoun to the Wildemar Hospital where he underwent surgery. Initially, Calhoun was listed in serious condition but later died. And once again, another law enforcement uh, family will have to bury their hero. And we also spoke to several residents who came by to leave flowers at a growing memorial for Deputy Calhoun. Many were emotional. It was sad to lose two brothers in one time so close together.